Insomnia is the most common sleep disorder. It affects anywhere from 25% of our population to as high as 40% with in the older age group. So it's really a highly prevalent condition. But what's really important about it is that it's a 24-hour problem. It is not just a problem when you're sleeping because how you sleep affects how you function during the day and what you do during the day will also affect your sleep. So insomnia has very important consequences for daytime functioning. It's been shown to decrease memory, your ability to learn. And I think more recently, what's been really, I think, exciting from the research standpoint is to show that insomnia can be a risk factor for diabetes, a risk factor for heart disease and high blood pressure. And even more recently, especially in older adults, it's a risk for falls, which is you know a big problem for older people. And also in older adults, it's a risk for cognitive decline. So it's kind of a, you know, having bad sleep early on can actually be a risk factor for getting dementia later on. So I, I think these are really exciting findings that really speak to the importance of insomnia and why it'd be really important to identify it, to ask about it, and because we can do something about it, we can help improve sleep, which then maybe as we move more research forward, we can see that it may have actually positive effects on overall health. I think findings that we have is that not all insomnia is exactly the same. So we have this syndrome or, or this, the, this disorder of insomnia, which is really a clinical diagnosis. It's difficulty falling asleep, staying asleep, or just feeling you know, unrefreshed that the quality of sleep is not sufficient uh, and affects your daytime functioning. So different age groups have slightly different symptoms, and one of the age groups that, of course, at higher risk are the older adults. They could be men and women. Menopause is one of these times where you know sleep gets uh, more impaired. And, and what's really interesting in older adults is that it's characterized by difficulty staying asleep predominantly. Younger people they have a lot of trouble falling asleep, whereas as you get older, is this nighttime awakenings. They fall asleep okay. Okay, you know, for two or three hours and start waking up. So the fragmentation of sleep. So you, we, as a clinician, you do want to ask, not only do you have trouble sleeping, but you really want to know what, what's their problem. Is it falling asleep or staying asleep and or both? Oftentimes it's both. That helps kind of determine how you're going to treat them. You know, what treatments are going to be most effective depending on what symptoms they have. It's hard when a patient comes and says, hey doctor, they're out walking out, you've asked them all these other questions, they weren't even here because they had insomnia. They're about, you're out to walk out the door and they go, hey doc, you know, I can't sleep. Most patients won't even tell you that. So it's really, really important that we ask. I think poor sleep is like a vital sign. It could be your fifth vital sign. And you should be asking about it because just like blood pressure or fever, it means if sleep is bad, it means something is wrong, possibly. So there are very simple things. If you only have 30 seconds, you can say, how's your sleep? Do you have trouble falling asleep, staying asleep? And yes. And how does that affect your daytime functioning? And if the answer to any of those are yes, and yes, it affects my daytime functioning, then you want to delve a little deeper into their sleep history. It doesn't mean you have to do that right away. You could do that at your next visit and or uh, you can send them to a sleep specialist.